the running lives of UNLV, and this place already is rocking. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger, and as we make our way around the country now and poised to go to Denver in just five weeks, the one thing we hear loud and clear, Jerry Tarkanian and the running Rebs are poised to get back to the Final Four. But Billy Packer, my big question is about the physical condition of his lead guard, Greg Anthony. Well, Anthony suffered a broken jaw against Fresno State. Jumped right back, played great against Arizona. Will not be wearing a mask, as you can see. Tough as nails, ball player. He's the kind of guy that can lead a championship club. Now, there's no question about their MVP they share, their big newcomer. Larry Johnson came on the scene as one of the most heralded players coming into college basketball and obviously is getting the job done. Gives him an inside force, great rebounder, and can finish off anything offensively. So Denny Crum comes in here with a team loaded with good players, but they've been inconsistent and they're shorthanded today. They really are. Jerome Harmon is their leading scorer, but more importantly, he's the kind of guy that can play against the Vegas team. Finishes the break. He's a guy that can bust out of the offense and score with that great jumper, but they obviously don't have him today. It'll hurt. All right, so Vegas has lost only four times. They're one of the teams that could be a top seed. Glamour and glitz here with the introduction of the players. Let's go to the PA announcer, Dick Calvert. And now, your running rebels. Sedina, California, number 32, Stacy Ogman. And a forward from Dallas, Texas, number four, Larry Johnson. At center for the Rebels from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., double zero, David Butler. And a guard from Detroit, Michigan, number 12, Anderson Hunt. And at the other guard from Las Vegas' Rancho High School, number 50, Greg Anthony. Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of your running Rebels and the nation's winningest, Coach Mr. Jerry Tarkanian. It's just a... Back with the opening tap in a moment. Today's Louisville UNLV game is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. And by the U.S. Navy, you and the Navy, full speed ahead. There is a new dimension for those who love to drive. It is long, sleek, smooth yet precise, designed for comfort, built for the road, shaped by the wind, proven on the track. Introducing Lumina, the adult sport coupe. When it comes to new dimensions in performance, nobody's winning like... People who want that competitive edge also want the nutrition of 100% whole grain. But of these eating cereals, only Wheaties is made with 100% whole grain. So only Wheaties gives you whole grain nutrition. Better get your whole grain. You better eat your Wheaties. Heard from an old student. Mm. Remember Brian McKenna? Smart kid. Good ball player. Great hands. Where's he going to college? He's not. Oh, too bad. Studying aviation electronics. But you said in the Navy. Then college. The Navy College Fund. $25,000 for your college education. Today's high-tech Navy. You and the Navy. 
Like I said, smart kid. a visit to the desert and 13 years ago Denny Crum brought his Cardinals out here but there was another event that he remembers because on that day of the game he was married to his wife Joyce and now this is the first time that Joyce and Denny Crum have come back to Las Vegas his starting lineup today will be taking on Jerry Tarkanian and the running Rebs Holden will be in the front court along with Sullivan and Spencer is his seven foot center and they need a big game out of him in the backcourt Williams and then the key player today Billy will be LeBradford Smith as he was held scoreless the other night the first scoreless game of his Louisville career by Memphis State those who saw that game saw a LeBradford Smith that really never got moving he was very stationary in the game I'd expect him to be much more explosive today and try to create some things individually Great athletes on the floor, but both of these teams can also play very tenacious, tough defense. And whichever club gets the edge in that category figures to come up with a win. Oh, Holden stole that tap. And Vegas comes up with the deuce. Ogman puts it in, and it's 2-0 UNLV. Brent, normally when you steal the tap, it goes to one of your people, so it was perfect pass from Holden to Ogman. Not much daylight for the shooters against this Vegas defense. Tarkanian, an underrated defensive coach. Well, look for a lot of screens, a lot of lob passing from Louisville with a big overplay that we're seeing so far today. Smith forces up a miss off the air ball. Here comes the running revs. You better pick them up quick because they'll take the three off the break. Ogman at the top. And they shoot two layups, but miss that time. But there is a big man, Johnson, and it's swatted away. Great defense underneath by the Cardinals. Loose, diving on the floor as oh. Anthony's hitting the nose. Uh -oh. He's down. They're going to have to have a timeout. Now, they they better, if anything happens to this nose, they've got to get a doctor out here to cut the wires in that broken jaw because he's got to have a breathing apparatus, and he's down on the floor now being tended to. They better get to him right away because uh, he hit. And that goes to show you the courage of this young man. Knowing he has the broken jaw, went right after the loose ball and dove for it. Tark said in the Arizona game, he amazed him in the fact that he was out there trying to draw a charge. Very, very upset standing at half court. This young man's an outstanding young kid, both on and off the floor. Watch him dive for this loose ball. Does the job sticking his nose right in here to take the ball away from Everett Sullivan. Then he goes... After the Bradford Smith dies to the floor, and there's where he gets hit. It didn't look like he was hit solidly in the nose, though. Fortunately, it looks like he turns his head, doesn't it? And he takes most of the impact on the side of the face, doesn't it here, Billy? Yeah, but most of us with a broken jaw would be sitting at home in bed, not diving for loose ball. So he's being attended to on the side, and I have a feeling he'll be back. They need to get Spencer and Paul Durley. On the turnaround, he misses. The Cardinals are 0 for 2 at the top. Now the Rebs come back. Up by a deuce. Young is the man substituted for Anthony. And he's got the outside shot. Great lob. Billy, they're getting easy shots down inside the paint here against Louisville in the early going. The reason for that, you've got to play their perimeter game. And when you do, it allows those post guys to be one-on-one -on -one inside. Williams can't hit. Spencer is boxed out, but he battles away, and Johnson comes up with the rebound. Round one to Johnson. Hunt with the three. Look at Johnson's hands. It's unbelievable rebound. Ogman blocked up. Nice job. Foul is going to be called underneath. Nice job by the Louisville players just holding their hands straight up, occupying the space so that Johnson had no place to go because he was pushed down under the backboard. Cardinals looking to get up on that scoreboard. 
They have not had an easy, uncontested shot yet in this game against this run and rev defense. Everett Sullivan's the guy they've got to break free right now. Lob to Spencer underneath, too high. Butler off with it. Young is guard. Brett Young is guarding Everett Sullivan, who's the hot hand shooter for Louisville. The Bradford Smith being covered by Augman, which is a tough thing when you've been 0 for 7 against somebody. You don't want to have to face Stacy Augman. But I think Everett Sullivan's the guy they ought to get the ball to this time down the floor. Vegas doing a job defensively and on the boards. They come up with a steal, but it goes out of bounds. Louisville ball. Larry Johnson showing he can go out and play that tough defense. And look at who's back in the game. Anthony returns. It is a broken jaw. Wired shut. They must protect the nose because that's his remaining breathing apparatus. And that's why you saw the doctor poised to come onto the floor. If he'd been hit solidly there in the nose, they would have immediately cut the wires. So the Cardinals miss from outside again. They just cannot find the range here in the early going. And that was Sullivan for the jumper, but now he's got Osmond back on him. As Anthony comes back in, he takes for Bradford Smith. Both playing hard-nosed man-to-man defense. Butler is fronted by Holden, so Anthony takes the three. Even Tark is amazed at this young man's tenacity. And he gives the Rebs a seven-point lead. Louisville coming down now will at least get up to the free throw line. There's a case of Bradford Smith when he realized he was fouled through the pass underneath. He should have taken the shot. He's begging for the shot now, but he's the one that created the pass. Yeah, he was passing and they're sure. not going to get the ball out of bounds. And they could have used the two shot You bet they could have. Here's Williams. They could anything, Billy, to get up on that scoreboard right now and stop this run. A solid screen set by Spencer. And Louisville just fighting through the screens. Just great defense here. Sullivan almost lost it. He did. Out of bounds. Brent, I have not seen any better man-to-man -man defense played by five people so far this year. And there is one of the master teachers in the game, as well as is Denny Crum. But Tart can really put that man-to-man -man pressure on you. Well, Crum very poised here in the early going. Quality coach. Won a couple of championships in this decade. Scurry out off Tarkanian's bench. Butler can step out. He's a good passer from out there. A three. Augment. Knocked down, and Butler trying to save it over there. And the ball goes out of bounds. It'll be Louisville's possession. Now, Brett, we talked about the loss of Harmon to Louisville's club in this kind of game. Here is the kind of player you need to break open and get you on the board outside of your offensive pattern. Right now, Louisville having a hard time getting anything. Smith went one-on-one, -on -one and Hunt breaks free with Williams on him. Oh, he puts it in! You will not find two guards that can finish the break any better than Anderson Hunt and Greg Anthony, because they'll take the ball on the dunk if they're contested. And you can see here, Williams, who is an excellent leaper himself, is trailing Anderson Hunt, but Hunt's not afraid to go in there and jam on anybody. Butler tracks it down. Time is called by the official because there's something on the floor over here in the corner. So we have an opportunity and we'll take a break right now. The running revs break out to a nine point lead. What do you think mom's gonna do when we show up? Uh, hopefully she'll feed us. <laughs> Good to see you, you know, it's been too long. One day it could all come down to a few inches. For those few inches, it's good to know you have Goodyear tires. I guess they're home. <laughs> I miss you. I miss you too. That's why we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. In financial matters, as in life, everybody's different. Different needs, 
different goals. The principal financial group understands. Our financial services are as unique and individual as you are. Personalized solutions that offer each customer an advantage. That's the principal edge. It's made us one of America's largest. So for diversified products that fit your financial needs to the latter, look for the principal edge. It's Tuesday afternoon in Ford County. Darn the thing about life here in Ford County. You'd think with a name like Ford County, people would prefer Ford trucks. Au contraire, people from Ford prefer Chevy trucks. All we said we were on the cutting edge. Isn't that the darndest thing? Could it be we're the bellwether of major societal shifts? It's mind-boggling. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Today's truck is Chevrolet. It is played on one of the PGA's most feared and revered courses. Live from the City of Angels, the Nissan Los Angeles Open. Next. Well, as Billy and I were talking during the commercial break, it's not surprising that Las Vegas is ahead here. Take a look at their record inside the shark tank, and these Cardinals better look out for that shark-infested water down here because this team is unbeaten at home this year. And, Billy, you made a very interesting point about that light show and the fireworks prior to the start of the game. Yeah, I talked to Norm Stewart last year when he brought Missouri in here and came out with a win. Not going to take credit for it, but I think a team should stay in the tunnel during that because it's very dark, and I think your eyes don't get adjusted to coming out here and shooting. Now, the defense has taken away a lot from Louisville so far, but that, that uh, display of fireworks doesn't help either. 9-0. Vegas with possession. Ackman makes it 11. And what's so tough, Louisville goes to the zone. It makes no difference for UNLV. Scurry playing with a lot of emotion. Johnson not back into the game. He has to come out early. The Cardinals 0 for 5. Spencer wants it on the inside. Now they get it to him. And he turned it over. Felton had a wide open space if he had turned to his right when he turned back into the traffic he came right to the defense nothing going right for Denny Crum here in the early stages foul not called back outside good inside outside game with the three Fred I want the fans to watch how the two guards from Vegas deploy themselves outside that three point line they cross court pass beautifully and they're wide open for those jumpers with their outstanding range Denny Crum uses a timeout. athletic shoes. They grab. They dig. BF Goodrich TA Tires. The athletic shoes for your car. BF Goodrich TA Tires. Sharp. When I say sharp, I mean business. I mean technology on the cutting edge. Sharp. Color technology, color scanners, printers, and copiers for high impact presentation. Sharp. Laser fax technology, laser quick, laser clear. I mean micro technology, the wizard, the electronic organizer. Information at your command. I mean technology on the cutting edge. When I say sharp, I mean business. Victoria Principal is a city mayor with a murderer on the loose. You're going to pay for this. Now he's chosen his next victim. Sparks, The Price of Passion, Sunday. Go, uh, Brent, you see here a shutout in the shark tank. But what I was talking about, here's the three-point line. Anderson Hunt standing back out here in Greg Anthony. Now watch what happens. The wings are beyond the three-point line. A good penetration by Hunt. No time for the defense to react. 
And there's Anthony waiting for the three-point shot and buries it. Tough to play it when wingmen can flare out there and you can't get your defensive players there yeah. in time. Hey, you mentioned, well, when was the last shutout here in the... Uh, I don't know. In the Sharks. This is some defense. Know. Ooh, up by 14. So let's see after that timeout now. Kimbrough checked in a little bit earlier on the floor. Sullivan, and they got it inside, knocked out of bounds by Butler. So Louisville's ball on an inbounds play here. Brent, interestingly, uh, against Memphis State, Louisville shot only 34%. They're having their troubles again today, not uh, penetrating much with the ball. And they can't hit it from the perimeter, but Sullivan with an offense, or Kimbrough comes up with an offensive rebound and a putback in the first points of the game. It's 14-2. Augman taken away by Spencer. Outlet to Kimbrough. Now Williams off the transition. Here's Smith. Two quick baskets now by Louisville, and maybe that'll spark a run. 14-4, they're down 10. And I'm wondering where Johnson is, Brent. He's been out for a long time now, and it really helps. And there's Moses, who misses a lot of those, but gets a lot of offensive rebounds back. And he knocked that one out of bounds. Johnson watching from the Vegas bench. He sat I mean, certainly no indication that anything is wrong. The last time we were in here against Arkansas, another fine club, Larry Johnson only got a chance to play 21 minutes. But this time he took himself out early in the game. Now Spencer. Had the ball. And he was fouled and he'll, he'll come up the line. Felton Spencer's a big target on the inside. And Butler a good defender, but Spencer's got some size and bulk on him. Felton Spencer is seven foot, 260 pounds, and that in itself is a story. When the young man came to school at Louisville, he weighed 300 pounds. He has dropped. He's down to 260. He's lost even five more pounds since that weight was published by the university. And one of the reasons he has taken both ballet lessons and also he has worked with a boxing trainer to improve his agility. And if you talk to NBA scouts, they'll tell you this young man's headed for the first round of the draft and perhaps the top part of it. They think very highly of it. Brent, do you remember we saw him in high school play a high school ball game that looked like he had a long way to go, but he certainly has developed himself into a fine player. Now, with the timeout, the crowd quiets down after the early run. And Louisville perhaps not quite as intimidated by the surrounding. Great Spencer block. up with a block, and this is a great run in progress right now. Good pass. And 14 8, and LeBradford Smith set it up with a very patient pass, and the Cardinals, behind the coaching of Denny Crum, dig back in now. They go back to their straight man to man defense. Johnson back in the game, so they'll look to go low to him a time or two. Anthony's had two threes today. That time he gets in close, and he's put down eight points already, so they can't stop the man with the broken jaw. And on that last fast break, Anthony wisely got out of the way instead of drawing the charge. You'd think he has to be a little bit gun shot. You know, one of the things I, I want to talk to him about, Billy, he got a technical foul. Now, now exactly <laughs> what was it that he was saying to the referee with that broken jaw the other night? And maybe he interpreted his thoughts. <laughs> Lead to LeBron for Smith, who's declined some pressure now. Williams off a pump fake, gets to the baseline. Kimbrough left alone outside. He buries the three. The Cardinals are back in this one. Tony's a great outside shooter, and he's really going to have to pick up the slack here with Harmon out. Now Butler has it knocked away, and he's fouled. Double low post set up by Vegas with Johnson and Butler inside. Two good targets, particularly when you have those excellent wing shooters. Both teams have put together streaks. So much for that shutout talk, huh, Coach? Good comeback, an excellent timeout call by Denny Crum. He's so calm on the bench. Well named by Al McGuire as Cool Hand Luke. And I think that's very appropriate terminology for a guy who's been one of the great coaches in the history of basketball. Didn't use a timeout early. But then when Vegas put it in another gear and kept spurting, he used one. And since that second one, the first one was ours, but since that second one, this has been a different Cardinal team, and Kimbrough seems to have helped off the bench. Stolen. Holden did not go after it aggressively. Johnson knocked it out of bounds. Louisville's ball. Shows you how Larry Johnson can move out there. If you watch UNLV practice, you'll see that everybody gets involved in the slide drills. 
He's just not a post defender. He can play a man on the wing as well. There's Kimbo. This fired complete into the hands of Johnson. Anthony Lobb for the door. Augman puts it down. That was great explosion by Augman. Boy, did he get out on the break. It's back to an eight-point lead, and they're all over the ball now. The defense triggers everything for these Rebs. Williams inside, off his game. Ogman bringing it down, and he's fouled. Well, this is a sensational run by Ogman on the break. He took off early. Greg Anthony spots him, and look at this leap. Former Olympian doing the job. Somebody's got to run the floor with him. They let him get in behind the defense like a wide receiver. Busting past that last safety in his zone. Well, Brent, he was guarding Kimbrough, and Kimbrough was the shooter, so Augman just took off on the release of the shot. Cross-court passing really extends the defense. The triples off this time and up over the top and into the hands of you-know-who. Johnson with a reset, and here's Ogman. He's all over the place. Hunts three. This is Spencer's ball almost stolen. Ogman all over the place. This game is not for the Mika Hart, is it, Billy? I guarantee you. Johnson defensively forcing that turnover. Holden is just being swallowed by Johnson right now. Well, Cornelius Holden is used to playing down in the low box, and when he steps outside, it's all been to Johnson's advantage. Troy Smith down inside, defensing on Johnson. Nice pass. Good pass to LeBrockford. Taken off by Johnson, open man, Butler. How about that look by Larry Johnson? Nobody staying back. Butler did the wise thing, realizing that it was a break anyway. But the pass made that play. And the Rebs come up with another gear after the Cardinals had battled their way back into it, and Smith is fouled. That could be Butler. Kimbrough already with a pair of fouls for Louisville. Spencer yet to pick up one. That's the second on Butler. Interesting about Spencer through the years at Louisville. He used to almost every game get into some kind of foul trouble, and I think he's fouled out of only one game for the Cardinals. Part of his development process played behind Purvis Ellison. Larry Johnson on Spencer down inside now. There'd be some pushing and shoving there. Scurry had checked back in with Butler out with the two fouls. Five foul rule back in this game. Spencer short with a little turnaround. Cardinals had plenty of red there, and they come up with it. Sullivan negotiating. Spencer battling away underneath. And Holden comes up, and he is fouled. And Johnson exchanging words with him now. Well, Louisville, 52.6 from the field, and they are certainly not shooting that here today against the running ribs. At 21%. As I said, uh, coming off that Memphis State game where they shot under 40 as well, not a good sign. Brent, what's happening right now is Louisville sending five guys to the boards. UNLV, if they get a hold of that ball, of which Scurry now in the ball game and Johnson certainly capable of it, they're going to have a three-on-one fast break the other way. Holden's big game this year, 20 points against Florida State. Johnson aggressively seeks out another rebound opportunity. Now he takes a three. He can make that shot. I guess so. He shoots it very well in practice. Has extended range. Hasn't had to use it much this year, but he can move out there if he has to. He's a candidate for National Player of the Year. Here's Spencer, and it's knocked away from him and out of bounds. Good defense again on the inside. Johnson has pulled down eight rebounds already today. He averages in double figures. 
He may get that by the intermission. Remember, he spent quite a few minutes over there on the bench. Spencer coming off of it again with that little turnaround. He's got it, and he'll come to the line. A tart, I'm sure, sees what's happening to his club. Louisville sending five, four to five guys to the board, and they're just forcing you know, these players down underneath and packing it in there. They're getting an awful lot of offensive rebounds. <laughs> Louisville's done a good job just getting back into this game, keeping in some semblance of order, because they were in a position where they might have gotten down so far and never even get back in the ball game. The half-court game, Anthony has hurt them badly. Scurry comes up with a loose ball, holds it wide away, and Bradford Smith up with it. And that's not free. Another turnover. Open man shots and, and Smith fouled him, but he stayed with him. He put a body on him that time. He did not give Johnson an easy way to go to the basket that time, only he was giving away a lot of inches and a few pounds down there. Well, Bradford Smith just got a little lazy bringing his ball up the court. He had to realize Larry Johnson was still back there. But watch this vertical leap. Some block. Got him with the body. Not much Johnson doesn't do well, shooting almost 78% uh, from the foul line. You know, I don't know what to make of something, Billy. In the old days, I used to see those graphics up on TV, the majors, a lot of phys ed majors. Now I see a whole lot of communications majors. They're telling <laughs> both of us <laughs> Johnson puts down his free throws. He can do everything. 26 to 15, Vegas with the lead. They broke to a 14-0 lead. Spencer. Good defense by Ogman. Anthony one-handed pass to Johnson. Yeah. And back to Butler. And that was a semi-break handled by the two big men. Knocked away from Holden and out of bounds by Ogman. Holden's got his hands full here today. He really does. He's finding himself uh, caught out on the perimeter an awful lot, Brent, and he just can't handle the ball out there against this type of defense. Tony Kimbrough picked up his dribble with this club. You better keep it alive. Spencer with an offensive board. And as he came back, there was a foul underneath. That was almost goaltending, the way they grabbed hold of that net when he came back with that uh, Spencer shot. is really starting to put the hurt on some people inside. He's got a lot of power. Butler is very thin. Belton Spencer is taking up a lot of room in there. Hasn't scored that much with the putbacks, but uh, if he continually gets that ball inside, he's going to cause a problem. So checking in number 33, Barry Young, and he replaces Stacy Ogman, who sits down. You know, one of the things that I'm sure will be written about and talked about as we get closer and closer to Denver in the final four and five weeks. The fact that the bench will play a factor in the second half of basketball games in there. And if you don't believe that, ask the NBA teams that go in there and try to play the Nuggets. You're going to need some depth to win the championship in there, to win a game on Saturday and come back at that altitude on Monday night. Well, Brent, I like Tark's statement about that. He said, I thought the games were played inside. You don't have that problem with that. <laughs> Well, you should talk to some of the NBA coaches. Here comes Holden now. Here's Spencer. Little turnaround, very effective down inside in that low post. Does he have a shot outside, Billy, facing oh, the basket? Oh, yeah, he has a pretty really decent jumper, but he's, right now, that big body is causing a lot of problems. He for it right there defensively. Yep. That was a Spencer play all the way. It's 28 to 19. Vegas can't quite shake him, can they? Here's Spencer now left hand rolling it in. He's got a good left handed hook. We watched him use it in practice yesterday. Now he, what he is doing, he is back the Vegas players down in so low that he's handling the ball. They've got to start fronting him. Jung is short on the iron, and here comes the Bradford Smith trying to get the transition going. Kimbrough on the inside comes back with it through the foul. 
and took a blow. Felton Spencer never crossed half court on that one. He's very tired. May have to come out just for a second or two. And if you're Denny Crum, you don't want to lose him now because you're making the nice run. Spencer playing without a single foul here in the first half. He has been the Cardinals' leading performer. And he'll sit down for a while and take a break right now. Troy Smith is out there. Williams, Kimbrough. Well, Bradford Smith and Cornelius Holden. If they could get some quality minutes out of Cornelius Holden. That would help a lot. Well, they're really going to need it, but Holden is built along the same lines as some of the UNLV players, which doesn't give him that bulk that has proved so successful for Felton Spencer. Then he comes back with Troy Smith, 6'8 freshman. Johnson, ninth rebound. Spray. The triple misses. Holden with the rebound. Open man is Smith. Puts a move on Anthony. An offensive foul is called, and Anthony goes crashing to the floor again. What a courageous young man he is. Are you sure they didn't wire that jaw with a magnet? Because it seems like every time he goes down, somebody is attracted to him. Did you believe that he'll take charges like this with that Amazing. broken jaw? And watch the body come right down on him. Tough kid. 6.57 first half, Vegas 28, Louisville 22. The madness is coming in March. It's Monday morning in Ford County. That full-size Chevy pickup sure has a more advanced design than Ford. Now that you mention it, the lines do remind me of modern neoclassic sculpture. I see a lot of Bauhaus influence. The understated simplicity even contributes to greater fuel efficiency. Form follows function. High fuel efficiency. No wonder people from Ford prefer Chevy trucks. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Today's truck is Chevrolet. It was Dean Witter's personal philosophy of success. We have a sacred trust to protect our customers. But its impact was felt on California Street. To maintain conservative policies. On Lincoln Street and Acorn Street. To put the interest of our clients first. Dean Witter put principles before profit, people before portfolios. There are many ways to measure success on Wall Street. We measure success one investor at a time. Dean Witter, a member of the Sears Financial Network. Dry was hot. Dry is Michelob dry. Bold taste with absolutely no aftertaste. So it refreshes completely. One taste and you'll drink it dry. Brent, a tremendous recovery here by Louisville to get back in the game. But watch this break. You'll see the three players are parallel right here. And Anthony has the ball. Now watch what happens when the big men hustle. Johnson moves. Great pass by Anthony. And then Butler right down the center of the lane. So the two big men were parallel to the ball, but they hustled down court and ended up with a great break. Just what the Shark needs. Reinforcements behind his bench, LT. Nobody in this place is going to tell him that they don't like that earring either, folks. He can wear whatever he wants. Sorry that that's not his seat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Vegas back with possession. Up by six. And Louisville has done a splendid job of getting back in this one. They were down 14-0. They have battled their way back now. Kimbrough. Williams on this side of the floor. Felton Spencer being given a break here in the first half. Six and a half minutes to go. This one being played like a tournament game. Well, with LeBradford Smith out of there right now, they've lost their catalyst for scoring. So Williams has it spotted away by Johnson. Lead hunt for a breakout. Brent, then he has a club on the floor right now that's lacking somebody to take the offensive as a score. Everett Sullivan being about the only one, and he's in the backcourt. So they're in trouble right now offensively. Troy Smith is 24. Defense! 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 Defense!
it's really tough for Sullivan to get his shots against these taller front reps. Here he is. Let's see if he can get one from outside. He's a good three-point shooter. Missing again. And Butler is there on the inside. Here's Hunt again. Oh, what a layup. He created a shot when nothing was there by using the left hand. They've got to put Spencer back yeah, in the game. He's coming. He's coming. They only used two times down the floor with that lineup, and that lineup was going to get him in trouble. There's a great lead pass. Watch Anderson Hunt here. He realized the ball would be blocked by Williams, so he scooped it under the basket. Been a sensational shot if he had hit it. Billy, after it was 14-0, here's how Louisville has turned it around. And even that, they haven't really blazed away, but they've done a lot better at 7 for 18. Felton Spencer has to impress any scout who's watching here today. The way he is holding up on the inside in this game, Billy, against really a rugged interior offense and defense that Vegas puts on the floor. They're really talented. It will change the complexion now as Spencer will bang down inside and force that you know, 18 to collapse a little bit. We're back to 10. Louisville has missed its last five shots. They missed every shot while Spencer was over there on the bench. And a foul against Butler, and I believe that's three. Yes, it is. That's the third personal. He's going to have to come out. He's upset. Well, he was on hold, and Butler is a great defender out on the perimeter for a big man. Moves his feet well, has quick hands, but he's picked up three tough ones. Clark's got a city. So here comes the key sub. Scurry back into the lineup. Holden's already blocked two today. His leading block game this year was against Virginia Tech when he got five. Explodes off the floor very well. One of those L.A. Crenshaw players, a school with great tradition. Scurry gives it over to Anthony. Ogman trying to get back in this game offensively. Johnson lobs deep to Scurry. Beautiful, but he was fouled by Holden. It was a little bit too good. Holden may be as quick off his feet as anybody we've seen this year. But a great interior passing, the high-low post situation where Johnson moves up there normally with Butler, but felt that Scurry was open and with Scurry taking Butler's place, hit him well. This is an adventure when he goes to the foul line. He's been doing the job the last six ball games, pushing himself almost up as a double-figure scorer now in this club. Now they build that lead back. 34-23, 5-10 to go. And it's been the defense demonstrated by Vegas that set this up. They have forced Louisville into mistakes like that all game long. That's nine turnovers by the Cardinals. Leverick Sullivan went up for that one, but took his eye off the ball. Had to make the catch before he tried to make the shot. The pass was okay. We go back into his zone. But then he changes up the defense. And a 2-3 zone with Spencer in the middle. The three is short and right into Kimbrough's hands. Vegas getting back much better against the break. Deep, beautiful pass and a put in by Sullivan. Brent, the last pass was almost that good. Sullivan didn't take his eye off of that one. Get it in deep, and it's Johnson with the miss. Smith comes out for the Cardinals. Sullivan's in the middle. Back to Sullivan. Johnson avoids the foul, and Sullivan goes through with the field goal. Wise move on Sullivan's part as Johnson backed off on him. Louisville getting an awful lot of breaks against Vegas. Hunt's triple. Lead stays at 10. Vegas never behind in this game. Broke out to a 14-point lead in the early stages of the game. Now 3.40 to go. Another turnover. That's 10. Ogman wants.
Scurry, and he gets it back. Now it'll be Scurry muscling his way in for that shot. He is a garbage player who's on a roll right now. And when Moses puts up a shot inside like that, you better block him out because he's great at going back and doing the putback. Sullivan's three out there. Johnson jumping up and went over the back, so it'll be Vegas' ball. Sullivan a little tired, Brent. He didn't really explode off the ground on that jump shot. Time out in the Shark Tank. Yo, Mars Blackman here, my main man, Michael Jordan, and Professor Douglas Kirkpatrick of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Yo, Professor, how does Mike defy gravity? Do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know? Michael Jordan overcomes the acceleration of gravity by the application of his muscle power in the vertical plane, thus producing a low-altitude Earth orbit. A what? Do you know what I mean? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Money, check him out. Express Mail from your post office offers you 46,000 drop-off points. We deliver, we deliver. A guaranteed morning delivery. We deliver, we deliver. And an overnight price of just $8.75. We deliver, we deliver. Speed, convenience, price. It's a package only we can deliver. Express Mail from your postal service. We deliver for you. first time you show up in your Chevy S10, she might not pay too much attention. But the next time you show up in your Chevy S10, she'll notice you've added a few tricks. And then the next time you show up in your Chevy S10, watch out. Because the less you pay for the basic truck, the more you can afford to trick it out. Wow, now that's a Chevy. and Max Center in Las Vegas where UNLV has a 12-point lead with about three minutes left in the first half. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Joyce. Coming up at halftime on the road to the Final Four, still no settlement in the baseball negotiations. Our Jim Gray will have the latest from New York. We will also have college basketball scores for you, and Billy will join us for a look at the big picture, the tournament picture, of course. We'll have all that and much more coming up at halftime. Now back to Brent and Billy. All right, Andrea, thank you. Still a lot of baseball talk out here in Las Vegas. For fans, it's interesting that the Toronto Blue Jays are listed as favorites out here in Las Vegas to win the American League East. And in the American League West, the defending World Series champion Oakland A's. And then over in the National League, the San Diego Padres have been posted as favorites along with the New York Mets. There will be a season, right? Just a matter of time. It looks that way. And, Craig, you can see that Louisville is staying back in their zone. Deflected by Williams out of bounds. Billy, one of the key numbers here. In the backcourt, Vegas has outscored Louisville 17 to 2. Williams has not been able to score in this game. LeBradford Smith with two points. Remember, he was held scoreless by Memphis State. Vegas with three triples out of their backcourt. Anderson Hunt there putting up another three, hit nine against New Mexico State, which is a new record for this uh, gymnasium. He's already got, what, two or three here today. Now let's see what Louisville can do with the last two and a half minutes here at the first half. They find themselves down by 12. They trail by as many as 14. Scurry with the foul on the throw into Holden, and that's Scurry's second. Remember, Butler with three. And Louisville started out in a box that time, and with Holden down on the low base, along with Felton Spencer. Pretty good deployment for this team, and, and Scurry never got to the point. Louisville always seems to come up with a player like this that doesn't look that impressive physically for his position, but because of his quick leaping ability to do the job on both ends of the floor. Again, Billy, we should point out that they are a man short here. Their right. leading scorer is not with him. Harmon not here today, and they really could miss him, particularly when they go into those droughts, because he's the kind of guy who can get you the big basket. 
Larry Johnson's been very quiet today. They haven't punched the ball down into him very much. He hasn't come to meet the ball as I think that he uh, that he should and could. Good rebounder, however. Nine boards. Punch three up high. And went up on top. It'll go over to Louisville here at the two-minute mark. As soon as we finish with our college basketball, we'll send you on to Los Angeles. I believe Mike Allen, he's a rookie on the tour. And he holds a one-stroke lead after two rounds. We'll see how he holds up now as the pressure starts to increase here at the final couple of rounds. Louisville down by 10. Nice. Bradford Smith got it inside to hold him beautifully. Well, Bradford puts that ball on the floor, and he makes it very tough outside that offense. And the Rebs turn it over. Chance to put together hoops here and get themselves back to within six. Bradford moving himself up right behind Phil Bond is the all-time leader at Louisville in regard to assists and has another year to go. Spencer, and they are. 39, 33, 13 points for seven-foot Felton Spencer here in the first half. Trent, remember when they had to take Felton out, he was just exhausted. That's when UNLV made that little run to get back into a comfortable lead. But with him back in the ball game, things certainly have changed. And the zone has slowed down the pace of this game. Missing the three-point shot. Spencer out with it in a hurry. Great pass over to Bradford Smith. It's a four-point game. And what's happening, the wing players from UNLV, Hunt and Anderson, uh, Anderson Hunt and Anthony, are getting caught, not back up with defensive balance. Johnson didn't want it down on the inside. He's he shook him off. It. He's not coming to the ball. Big fellow like that's got to demand it in this situation. He still doesn't want it. He has shook off guards twice who've been looking into him. So it's keeping the ball out the perimeter right now and they're not getting the inside game going. You see, when they're so far out on the wings on the perimeter, it makes the backcourt wide open for a fast break. They really have missed Butler here. Well, they want only three fouls. So Anthony will take a triple, and he's got it his third of the first half. Bails him out with a three. Last seven seconds now for the Cardinals. Williams from the baseline. He's got it. Two seconds to go, and we'll go to the intermission. Vegas with a lead, but Louisville has to be encouraged by the way they hung in this one. It's 42-37. The Shark leads another one at home. And our coverage will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Well, good morning, Congressman. No, that's all right. We're all up. When? Friday? You're kidding. Nikki, do you speak Russian? We got company coming. We got to get the word out. Hey, Chief, better take a look at this. Let's get that Russian story on page one. Order me some Russian flags. 1,500. We'll make it 2,500. Patty's even quartered here. He says he's coming here to try our apple pie. Happy party of two. Why Hamilton? I see you're staying set for two nights. Ah, uh, yes, that's correct. Oh, that kid wrote him a letter, right? Yeah, you know, I would bring him to Hamilton on this route. <laughs> First Russian facts I've ever seen. Monday after Major Dan, mm -hmm. it's City. What happened in my office? is between me and everyone who saw it. Man. I'm dating Jerry Gold. I don't want to live anymore. When Murphy falls for a schlock journalist, is it too much to swallow? Thanks, sweetie. You're welcome, hon. Murphy Brown, followed by an all-new Designing Women, Monday. This is CBS. Sir, this is one of the few businesses that doesn't advertise in the GTE Everything pages. Why is that? 
Well, this is Arnold's rug, not rugs, rug. I only have the one rug, and this is it. But if I advertise in the book people use, they'll be in here looking at my rug. Someone might even buy my rug. There'd no longer be an Arnold's rug. Businesses that want to be successful advertise in the GTE everything pages. Those that don't, don't. Why the Strip doesn't want a maglev train this week. Thomas and Mack Center, where music fans have heard everything from Pavarotti to you too. They are hearing the music they like best in this town, the sounds of the running rebels, but Louisville has uh, cut the UNLV lead to five at halftime. Greg Anthony, broken jaw and all, has 13 first half points. Hi again, everyone. I'm Andrea Joyce. Welcome to the road to the final four. We are going to take a turn off that road for just a minute and turn our attention to baseball. As you probably know, the negotiations are continuing today and throughout the weekend. Now, there was talk yesterday of a possible settlement. That, of course, did not happen. So that means that our Jim Gray is still in New York, and he joins us now with the very latest. Jim? Thank you very much, Andrea. About a little more than an hour ago, owners and players reconvened up on the 17th floor of the commissioner's office trying to hammer out a collective bargaining agreement which would enable the owners to end their lockout of 10 days now. And there's been so many twists and turns that have taken place in this story, there is a little bit of progress going on in a week that's been filled of action. The owners have backed off all of their original and revised proposals. The union was so outraged they threatened to walk out of the talks, and that successfully squashed the owner's strategy. The main issue being discussed on the 17th floor of the commissioner's office is salary arbitration. The owners do not want a change in the current system, with eligibility coming after three years of service, while the players want arbitration after two years. Of the cases that were filed this year, the players have increased their salary $68.4 million, up 121%. So the owners feel the status quo is enough. It would look like the same deal. It would be, in, in, in fact, the same deal. Well, status quo is pretty good, but once again, you know, I mean, it really isn't status quo because there's pension benefits and there's other things that are very complex that need to be addressed. This is baseball's sixth labor dispute in 18 years, and with the current lockout now 10 days old, the union feels that the owners are divided on how to approach and settle this dispute, which they feel has caused the owners to make many drastic changes in their proposals. And you begin to wonder just uh, what voices on the other side are ones worth listening to. There is some confusion and, and difference on their part uh, within their group. Uh, on the other hand, I think we're as strong as we've ever been. Reasserting his authority, Commissioner Faye Vincent now has been able to use his influence to moderate the hardline owners. And both sides now feel an agreement can be reached. I hope it can be resolved quickly. and, and uh, uh, but at the same time, we, we don't want to sell out our players. I'm just always hopeful, that's all. You think they can find an agreement, work one out? I hope so, if they stay communicating. And they still are communicating, and joining us now is one of those people who is communicating, David Cohn of the New York Mets. He just came downstairs from the commissioner's office. Tell us exactly what's going on right now, Dave. Well, unfortunately, there's not a lot of news. We've just scratched the surface. But the key is, is we moved away from the arbitration issue. There's, there's a... There's uh, not much of an agreement there right now, but we're, we're trying to focus on the other issues, the reopener issue, uh, so that this doesn't happen again. Once again, you know, the, the players are sitting in Florida. We're ready to play, and in Arizona, it's unfortunate. You know, the owners are the ones who have put the padlocks on the fences. We're ready to go, but not at the expense of being taken advantage of. Okay, Dave, thanks for joining us. Go okay. back upstairs into the meetings. We'll keep you posted throughout the weekend. Let's go back to Las Vegas and Andrea Joyce. All right, thanks, Jim. And, of course, we will keep you up to date on the baseball negotiations throughout the weekend. In golf, the third round of the Nissan Los Angeles Open is underway. Pat Summerall is at the Riviera Country Club with a look at how the tournament is shaping up. From beautiful Riviera Country Club in the Pacific Palisades in California, where the weather has been ideal all week and continues today, 78 degrees, humidity 38%, Mostly sunny with very little wind, so we look forward to today's third round. After two rounds, the relative unknown had his name atop that leaderboard. Michael Allen, a 31-year-old rookie, 11 under. Rocco Mediate, one behind at minus 10. Jacobson, Morgan, Stadler, and Sills, eight under par. Hammond, Couples, and Sutton with Mike Reed at seven under, and Tom Sickman and Corey Pavin at minus six. He's a rookie, Michael Allen. Will he choke? We talked to him earlier. It's golf. It's taking it step by step. It's taken me longer than a lot of people, but you know, I'm 
steadily getting better and better every single year. And I hope to keep improving. And that's the way it stands right now as Michael Allen double bogeyed the first hole. Couples, mediate, and sills lead at minus 10. As you look further down the leaderboard, regular names, Irwin and Kite and Paven and Hal Sutton, Mike Reed and Peter Jacobson. That's the story from here as we look forward to today's third round. Let's go back to Las Vegas and Andrea Joyce. And you can watch third round coverage of the Nissan Los Angeles Open right here on CBS coming up, up after today's game. And when we come back, we will check in on the college scoreboard and Billy will join us to do a little bit of tournament talking. That's all coming up when we come back. choose to finance or lease your new GM vehicle someplace other than GMAC, you might find yourself waiting in line instead of out hugging one. GMAC. Nobody wants to get you into your new GM car or truck faster. Dear Dad, you once told me that courage is putting your fear aside and doing your job. Here in the Army, I've learned what that really means. Introducing new Extra Strength Rolaids, 250 milligrams stronger than Tums EX, 1,000 milligrams of fast relief. This settles it once and for all. At BASF, we don't make the plane. We make it lighter. We don't make the lotion. We make it smoother. We don't make the dress. We make it brighter. We don't make the carpet, we make it tougher. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF, the spirit of innovation. Look out tomorrow. Here comes party. The road to excitement now leads to this. A special touring edition of the Grand Prix Sports Sedan. It's V6 power, fuel injected quick. It's optional anti-lock braking, sure and precise. It's feel, undeniably Pontiac. Grand Prix STE. Back at the Thomas and Mack Center, the home of the Super Bowl of rodeos, and they are kicking up some dust here this afternoon. UNLV with a five-point lead over Louisville. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Andrea Joyce. We are going to head back down the road to the Final Four and bring you up to date on some college scores from around the country. We begin with a Big East matchup at the Cap Center. Number five, Georgetown, looking to rebound from a loss earlier in the week. They are leading Villanova in the first half. Meanwhile, number seven, Michigan, is hosting Northwestern. The Wolverines have won the last 11 meetings with the Wildcats, and they have a big second-half lead. In the Southwest Conference, the Houston Cougars have an eight-game winning streak. They're looking for number nine, but it's a close game with S. SMU that game in the second half. In SEC action, they are at halftime. Auburn with a one-point lead over Kentucky. Also in the SEC, Tennessee is visiting Alabama. Now, the Volunteers have not won there in 10 years, and that's a close uh, first-half score that you see right there. And in the Metro Conference, it's South Carolina and Memphis State, that game in the first half. Well, in just about two weeks from now, the NCAA will pick the teams for the tournament. And as we get closer to March Madness, we thought that this was a perfect time to take a look ahead and start talking about some tournament possibilities and who better to do that with us than Billy Packer. If you were to put a stamp on this, the way things are shaping up right now, how would you categorize the tournament? Well, I think, Andrea, the regular season has proven that there's some clubs that have played very consistently. The, the clubs like Missouri and Kansas, to speak of some, and UNLV behind us, not a very bad club there either. But I think we see maybe as many as 35, 40 clubs that legitimately have a shot. This is, this is an interesting season because you've got some high-profile teams that are really on the fence. They really are, and this is surprising when we started the year. Your clubs like North Carolina, Indiana, uh, certainly have been staples in the NCAA tournament. North Carolina has been a final 16 teams, it seems like, for all of our life. Notre Dame and Villanova projected to be very good this year, and they also are on the bubble. Of course, Villanova with two wins over Syracuse, that's got to help, right? That has to help them, and I think that uh, all of those clubs uh, 
might find themselves in the tournament, but it's surprising to see them in, in this risky a position talk, now. Talk about surprises. What about the surprise teams that nobody thought in the preseason would even be around? Well, how about Kansas and Connecticut, Purdue, all clubs that were expected to be in the middle of the pack in their leagues at their very best. Kansas has worked themselves all the way up to a 1-2 position in the country. Connecticut leading the Big East, Purdue in the Big Ten. Oregon State in the Pac-10, and Michigan State right on Purdue's heels. So those obviously have to be the surprise teams and all solid potential clubs for a Final Four. Great debut for Jim Anderson. It really is uh, a Oregon great debut. State. Also, I think, from a standpoint of the Pac-10, now it's going to go very deep into the NCAA tournament. Very quickly, when you look at the sleepers, though, you can't really consider them sleepers because they've been around all season. They've been playing well. But who's going to be the Seton Hall? Where's that going to come from this year? Well, it usually comes from one of the power leagues, the Big East, Big Ten, ACC, as such. And I look for clubs in the fourth and fifth position in those leagues that will get into the tournament that have played against very good competition to make that Seton Hall type run. All right, Billy, thanks so much for you, cutting Andrew. your break short and joining us. Okay, and that'll do it for this edition of On the Road to the Final Four. And we will be back with the second half after a message and a word from your local station. BF Goodrich TA tires perform like great athletic shoes. They grab. They dig. BF Goodrich TA tires. The athletic shoes for your car. This is your pump. Push this little thing here, and you just pump. Pump, 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 pump. You know how to do that, don't you? Five or six pumps. I say 15 pumps. 20 to 25 times. 70 pumps to do it. You know what I'm going to use this also is to intimidate people. These things in here are on what they're called. Airbags. When you want to release, it's a little button back here that you just push down, and you can hear the air leaving the pump. I think we're on to something here. Pump it up. This is CBS. Hey, Vern. Oh. Just came in to cheer you up, and boy, do I have some great news for you. Wilden's Pride Dodge Red Tag Sale is on now. Save thousands of dollars with over 250 new Dodge cars and trucks to choose from. With guaranteed rebates up to $2,500. And when you test drive any new Dodge, you receive $50. Them boys at Wilden's Pride Dodge are saving you money again. Now, don't that sound great? Boy, Vern, you sure got awful emotional about good news. Miss Caitlin Phillips demonstrates the loading of the Fuji Discovery 60 compact camera. As with most Fuji cameras, the Discovery 60 comes complete with autofocus, auto flash, and auto wind. And one more feature that you can't get on any other make of camera. Drop-in loading. So now you can load a roll of film faster than you can get it out of the box. Only Fuji cameras have drop-in loading. Fuji, a new way of seeing things. CBS Sports coverage of today's Louisville UNLV game is sponsored by Gillette and the revolutionary Gillette sensor shaving system. Gillette, the best a man can get. Bugle Boy, in jeans and casual fashion, Bugle Boy's leading the charge. And by the new generation of Oldsmobiles. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. Well, if you like neon, this is your city, Las Vegas, Nevada. The running Rebs broke out to a 14-0 lead. Louisville went almost six minutes without a single point. And then they rallied in the latter stages to close back to within five. Three-point shooting, really the difference of the game. Vegas five of 16 and Louisville only one of four and to continue that theme the guards for Vegas have outscored their counterparts with Louisville 20 to 6. Felton Spencer battling away to keep the Cardinals in this game came in here averaging 14 points a game and he already has scored 13 in the first half and so our leading scores Greg Anthony playing with that broken jaw has put in 11 points for the running Rebs and Spencer with 13 and uh, Billy, as we get ready here now for the for the second half of this game, the Cardinals have to feel very confident, but I don't know if they've got enough to kind of get over the hill here in the Shark Tank. Well, they faced that defensive pressure for the first time, and without Harmon, they had no go-to guy down inside to get him out of the offensive pattern into a basket. 
Uh, I think that Greg Anthony's really been the key in the ball game for UNLV, though, not only with his defensive pressure outside, but his leadership. He's got five assists, only two turnovers, went down in the first, what, 20 or 30 seconds right. with that jaw situation. Great leadership on his part. You know, we should follow up on a story on Jerry Tarkanian because we're asked about it all the time, and I'm sure that the folks have seen some of the stories in the newspapers that that 13-year legal dispute with the NCAA is just about to come to an end. They're kind of down to semantics, I was told, before the start of this game. Tarkanian will agree to pay the legal costs, and that's somewhere in the neighborhood of $340,000. Then also there are court costs that he will cover, and that's in excess of $20,000. So the settlement will be worked out of right now. It's the wording, and it's interesting that uh, a family member, Danny Tarkanian, one of the attorneys working on that settlement right now. So expect a development in that story sometime next week. Now, this is the Cardinals. And they're road red. They come out trailing 42-37. And surprisingly, with that great man-to-man -man defense that Vegas played to start the game, they start the second half in a zone. And Holden misses the first shot. Butler with three fouls. Gets it off the hunt. Here's Ogman. Ogman nice inside. And Holden fouled him. That's his second. Like a ballet dancer out there is Stacy Ogman. Catches the ball with one hand and then just floats around. So acrobatic. UNLV's national ranking has gone anywhere from preseason number one, and then they lost twice in December. Kansas and Oklahoma, and they fell to 15, edged up to five, then fell to 12, and now they're back at four. They have lost four games, none of them here in Las Vegas. Their most recent was at Louisiana State. That would have been their last loss of the year. They have put together a nine-game winning streak since that loss. That's their longest of the season. So the running Rebs here trying to win for the 10th straight time. They're up 44-37. And Brent, if you're in the stock market, expect that chart to continue to go up, not down. Sullivan with a three from the corner as his chart starts to go up here in the second half, and the lead is back to four now. Inside to Butler, and it's six. It really hurt UNLV when Butler had to sit with those three fouls in the first half because it allowed Spencer to really have his own way inside, which he's getting again. Missing, and Johnson off with the rebound, and Spencer tumbles to the floor, gets back up, and goes back on defense. Here's Anthony with 11 first-half points. Hunt has not been bashful. He has fired up eight from three-point land here in this game so far. Now Johnson had eight rebounds in the first half, but only took a few shots and really didn't come to the ball very well. See if Jerry Tarkini at halftime had a way to get Johnson the ball more active on the offensive end. Well, Spencer played the entire first half without a foul. He could afford to be extremely aggressive there, and he was attempting to deny Butler the pass, and he picks up his first personal of the game. Of course, Jerry Tarkanian has always done well in the junior college ranks as a recruiter. Butler was the player of the year two years ago. Johnson last year. Clark knows how to go to that well. Hunt takes it out deep. Sullivan battling away against the bigger Johnson. And Buck out over the top that time. And he makes a difference offensively. He missed the first few games of the season because of an injured knee. Staying in that zone. Smith gets it to Spencer, and the left-handed hook shot makes it a six-point game again. That's what LeBradford Smith was not doing early on in this game and didn't do at all against Memphis State, which is to penetrate a little bit with the dribble. Here's Butler getting in low. He's on fire here in the second half. LeBradford Smith tried to draw the weak side charge and hurt his wrist. It's 50-42, Vegas over Louisville, 17-43 left in regulation. You want to be matching up out front. Butler rebounding, loses it, Sullivan. Second time today, Sullivan jam one over his head. Great pass inside and he gets back on Johnson and the foul is called. No time in this game to celebrate as Everett Sullivan did on that last play. Third personal against Holden. You notice that Sullivan raised his hand to try to get the foul called on him. That hurts that Holden goes out, although Kimbrough played 
fairly well when he got in the first half. Good touch. Kimbrough. Holden will sit down. Young man participated in the Olympic trials. Saw him up in Denver. Came close to making that ball club. Bradford Smith coming down the baseline. Now oh, it's Hunt. Here's Butler. And Smith with a good defensive play. He'll come back, loses it. Williams tries to run it down, and it's Vegas ball. Anthony comes out. Oh, that's it. Oh, what a pass. Great pass, and Stacy Augman made a sensational screen on that play for his teammate. 53-44 Vegas. Face Smith's triple. That's what they need. Someone at the perimeter. It'll change the complexion of this game. Bradford wising up, getting out of the area where Augman is on that zone. Anthony Short. Spencer couldn't get it, though. Butler is right there, and he's fouled. He'll come to the free throw line, and Butler has been a big difference. Well, Brennan got a nice rest there in the first half, and you can see these players are playing so hard on the defensive end of the floor that they're just wearing down. It's the intensity of a, a, a regional final here it really is, and two clubs that wouldn't surprise me if they were there. Both teams certainly capable. As it looks right now, Vegas figures to be the top seed in the West. That's how it looks on paper right now. A lot of things can change between now and when the seeds come out, but... <laughs> Clark's uh, chewing on that towel. I, I hope he's buried a few bucks somewhere if that's going to be the payoff. He's got some tomato cans out here. You're talking about the legal fee. Yeah, I'm talking about the legal fee. I always want to get a definition of that word payoff. Oh, this is Bradford over into the corner now. Inside the Spencer, not free. Good play by Johnson. Augman with the ball, twists around with the oh, Rose with the roll, not there. Louisville. He is fun to watch. He sure he? is. So is this guy, Sullivan. Short. Anthony gives it to Hunt. Hunt stood there for what seemed like 30 seconds waiting for the ball to come to his area. Just has great range. The lead is 10. That little matchup zone causing some problems for Louisville. Not what you would have anticipated to start the second half. And a whole lot of sharks are smelling blood right now. Easy for Kimbo. LeBradford is putting the ball up, which is a good sign for Louisville. They need somebody with Harmon not here to get something rolling offensively and then attack the boards. Butler in low. Now Felton Spencer is finding himself trapped when they go that double low post. And they're just lobbing over him. There's no help from the weak side on that play. Johnson. Kimbrough and Johnson again exchanged words over in the corner and I believe he was being warned by the uh, referee. Threw an elbow back. Not a smart move by Larry Johnson. He is the only player this year on the Vegas team that started every game. Here's the exchange. Kimbrough and you could see Johnson with him and he just kind of threw that little reminder there and the referee quickly stepped in. Nice move as he looks straight ahead. Yeah, that right. Maybe they won't see that. Exactly. Let's see, they got into a Vegas got into a fight with Utah State. Right. And a couple of not players are scene. not going to be able to go up and play up there. Is that right? In the uh, in the return match to right. Scurry. And I they think. already suspended uh, Jeter was suspended for three games. He was the fellow who really instigated things there, and Jerry said it was not a good scene. Well, we've got a timeout here in Las Vegas. It's 58 to 49, 14.58 to go. Vegas with the lead. The madness is coming in March. 
Announcing three ways Oldsmobile's owner satisfaction plan gives you a big edge. One, if you don't still love your new Olds after 30 days or 1,500 miles, we'll let you do something no one else does. Return it. Two, unlike some warranties, Olds covers just one part. This is the part. Three, Olds now offers roadside assistance at a very convenient time. Around the clock. The Oldsmobile Edge. Extra satisfaction at no extra cost. This is the new Gillette announces a razor that can sense the individual needs of your face. Introducing the extraordinary Gillette Sensor Shaving System. Sensor blades are mounted on responsive springs to continuously sense and adjust to your face for the best shave a man can get. Closer, smoother, safer. New Gillette Sensor. Spencer thought that he had Larry Johnson in his sights. He did, but as you'll see, Greg Anthony throwing the ball right here. Stacy Augman sets the back screen, which allows Larry Johnson to go in for the uncontested layup. Felton Spencer never realizes Augman's behind him for the screen. Smart play by Stacy Augman. Well, speaking of dunks, through the years, has anyone been any better than the University of Louisville and back in 1980 when Daryl Griffith led that team to a national championship, 76 dunks. Then it was Purvis Ellison's turn in 86. And this year, dunks have accounted for 17% of the Cardinals' point total. They have soared through the air with the greatest of ease for a total of 143 dunks and three on the day. But Vegas has five. They're beating them there, too. They have five and. That bird or that cardinal will look like Stacy Ogman the way he floats through the air. Here's Anthony misfiring from outside. Louisville's ball. By the way, on Ogman, you know, Brent, there's so many rumors float around the country, and there was a rumor this week that Stacy Ogman said that if Vegas were to go on probation, he'd transfer to Georgetown. I asked him about that. He said, I don't know where those things start. I've never made that comment to anybody and never considered it one way or the other. Yeah, and we should clarify that even though the 13-year-old suit against the NCAA is about to be settled, there is an ongoing investigation involving a player by the name of Lloyd Daniels out here at Vegas. Vegas forces the turnover. There have been investigators on the scene. And Jerry Tarkanian saying there's nothing really major as far as he knows, but we'll wait and see. Larry Johnson has wanted that jumper about two or three times down the court. I really think he needs to come to the ball more on the inside around the foul line area. Beautiful pitch ball movement. Kimbrough. That pass inside so frequently you can find a man all alone underneath, Billy, if you'll just take the time to look for him. Tark going for the timeout, and I'm sure that this is going to be for two things. One, talk about getting the ball to Johnson, and two, a change in defense. So while the Shark changes things up, we'll take a break and come right back. Matt? Uh-huh? Are you awake? Yeah. Are you? No. <laughs> Matt, I never had a baby before. Oh, me neither. <laughs> I'm happy, are you? Yeah. I'm a little scared, though. You know, we'll, we'll need a bigger place. Amy? Yeah? I love you. Oh, Matt. We'll be okay. We will. I promise. Mass Mutual. We help you keep your promises. Finally, there's a minivan for kids with parents. And let's face it, we all have them. Yeah. The all-new Oldsmobile silhouette. Talking radical concepts here. Your own window seat. Room for lots of things. And neat stuff to keep your parents from bugging you on long trips. Besides, silhouette makes them look cool. Right. Yeah. Your father's Oldsmobile. Ready, dudes? And they need all the help they can get. Yeah. This is the new generation of old. Pizza Hut has a great new way to get your family together. An NCAA mini basketball. Uh -huh. Now you can get one for only $2.99 with every Pizza Hut pizza you buy. 
The mini basketball is fun to play with. Mm -hmm. And Pizza Hut knows that the family that plays together uh -oh. is always showing off. The mini basketball is just $2.99, but hurry, supplies are limited. Pizza Hut, making it great. This game summary is sponsored by Pizza Hut, an NCAA corporate sponsor. Pizza Hut, making it great. Well, Louisville has picked up its shooting pace after going 0 for 5 when Vegas streaked out to a 14-point lead. And from three-point land, the running Rebs have hit six to Louisville's three. It's a seven-point margin right now, 58-51. We've got 13.55 to go here in regulation. Brett, don't be surprised to see something set up here for Larry Johnson. And Denny Crum goes to a zone of his own, figuring that Clark was going to change something offensively. But they want to pump that ball to Johnson. He's coming to baseline over to the ball side. Hunt from three-point land. Gray leaping ability by Holden that time. And timing. Good call, Brent, because you just had a perfect view of how he just stayed right in perfect position and then went straight up. And the defense does go from the zone back to the man-to-man, -man, which is much more effective. Pressure all over the Cardinals right now. Williams gets daylight. Run down in the corner by Smith and a second opportunity here, and it'll be Kimbrough's three. In and out, and oh, oh. Smith has got it again. Now it's Sullivan's turn from three-point land. Oh, that's cold there. Johnson finally gets it down for the Rebs. That was a golden opportunity. Some rebound by LeBradford Smith. Johnson wants it, and Holden banging away defensively. He has played much better here since a sluggish start when he was turning the ball over and seemed a little bit lost. But he's he, come on. He is comfortable down in that low post despite his frame. When he gets out on the wing area, he has some problems. They wanted to get the ball to Johnson, and Denny Crum really messed up Jerry Tarkanian on this one and going to the zone because they planned to get Johnson the ball down low. Here he is. Captain back. Has soft hands, stay with it underneath. An odd combination, the Charles Barkley type, the great body and the soft hands. Smith comes through with a great driving layup, and he was fouled, and he'll step up to the line, and that could be four on, but let me see who they put this one on. What's... Yes, all right, it's confirmed. That's the fourth foul on Butler. Oh, what a big moment this is. They're going to have to take him out, and this is when the Rebs sort of lost their spark. Right, the two-fold problem here for Jerry Tarkanian. Butler goes out, Felton Spencer comes back in rested. So big play for Louisville and a, and a tough break for uh, UNLV. Yes, the Shark right now, and he says, I love six fouls. I <laughs> we heard from some other coaches, including Roy Williams, when we were at Denver for a little NCAA talk in there a couple days ago, and Roy says, I don't want anything to do with it. Let's stick with the five. And Nolan Richardson uh, went right along with yeah. that. Richardson brought his club in here early in the year, played extremely well. They're finding themselves the regular season champ, which means just a little bit of nothing as far as the total mix, but down in the Southwest Conference doing the job. Foul, and he'll come up to the line. Let's see if that was Spencer's second. Beautiful bounce pass inside, and you can see that Jerry Tarkanian did tell those fellas at the timeout, let's let the big fella handle that ball. Yeah, it is. Well, a reminder, of course, that at the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of both UNLV and Louisville. with that little hesitation gets a lot of people to go into that lane a little early. 63-54, Rebels, 11-49, regulation. Good change on the dribble. And then he lost it. Sullivan comes back, and Anthony is stripped. Great play. Oh, the technical foul. That's the second technical on Anthony since he had his jaw wired. And that was for an expression of disgust with the official. Boy, that is going to be a big play there by Sullivan. He stops an automatic two, and they'll go to the line for two, and the ball out of bounds. That was a quick tee. Did you see that assistant coach lose his gum over there? On That's Sammy Gingrich. And, of course, a great guy to shoot those 
technical fouls with Bradford Smith made 44 of his last 46 one of the best free throw shooters in the country now let's take a look at this because it featured a great defensive play first of all Everett Sullivan strips the ball and then it hit Anthony in the leg Anthony goes back very demonstrative and that was not the official that called the technical but the one off to the side so after the free throws Louisville gets the ball out of bounds this could be a six-point turnaround or a seven if they hit a three. Let's see what the Cardinals can do with it. They're down 63-56, 11-24. Hanging tough in Las Vegas. Up comes Williams, short. But LeBradford Smith has got it, tried to get inside, gets it back. Felton Spencer. Oh, LeBradford again. And LeBradford Smith is all over the floor. Well, I give him a lot of credit for hustle. And he tried to make the good shovel pass inside when he really had the little 10-foot jump shot. Looks like he hurt that wrist again. Kimbrough's going to give him a break. Then he's going to let him rest for a time. See, LeBradford going after the ball, diving for it. This was the second occasion where he got his hands on the ball on that last time down. It's Augman inside. Offensive rebound, and it's taken away by the Cardinals. Back they come. Both teams showing a lot of courage in this game. Good ball, good steal by high. Johnson. Rebs lead at 63-56. Johnson with the left hand. Here's Holden. Bad pass. Threw it right to Hunt. Hunt's got Scurry and side. with the field goal. It's 63-58. Louisville pulling on the great pride of the tra and tradition of their program. And right then now. Anthony comes back with a triple. 14 points, his first of the second half. 66-58. And then it's a great game unfolding here. Anthony looked right at that official when he hit that jumper. Anthony's personal, his second. Let's take a look at that block which incited the crowd. I thought it was a great block. All ball right here by Tony Kimbrough. And Scurry Question goes is, to the floor. Felton Spencer come in afterwards here. Well, it sure wasn't Kimbrough. Was Spencer. Foul. Did Spencer take him out? It might have been the second man to come through because no question it was a great block, Billy, just like you pointed out. And there's Holden out where he's not comfortable. Williams having a rough day. Spencer with an offensive left rebound and a left-handed hook shot. Oh, the emotion in this game. It's a six-pointer again. And Brent, we have LeBradford Smith on the side. Williams has taken a lot of big shots today. He's having an off day. He ought to look to give it up a little bit more. But Felton Spencer with that big body and a nice left-handed hook. This reminds you of the emotion of a national championship. It really does. The these two it, teams are playing. Wow. It's like a Louisville club is out of it, but they're not to be denied in this game, and they just keep coming back. You know, back. you know, Billy, I'm noticing one thing with Purvis Ellison gone. This is a more emotional Louisville team. You know, never nervous Purvis, and I thought the whole team reflected that. They were very calm. This team is, is showing a little bit more of LeBradford Smith and Felton Spencer. They play with some enthusiasm. You know, it can be both good or bad. That can work in your favor or against it. 66-61 now. It's back to five. Tark puts Butler back in the game with the four fouls. Rest Johnson to go down the line. Easy layup for Scurry. Butler, a very underrated passer for a big man. They're keeping ice on LeBradford Smith's hand, his left hand over there on the Louisville bench as the Cardinals bring the ball down against this great Vegas defense. Big overplay by Anderson Hunt on Williams, who could get the backdoor cut if he's taken. Fans love this defense. They are all over Williams. Now it's Sullivan trying to get free. Comes the baseline and drew the foul, I believe, before the shot. Scurry picked him up in advance of the shot and has assessed the personal. 
Billy, we get word from the bench to follow up on the Bradford, a very simple bruise. I see him standing up, so I would expect to see him back in the game quickly. Well, he heard it in the first half. Trying to get that, make sure that swelling doesn't take place. Kimbrough's had a solid game today, both offensively and defensively. Could be a big lift for this club. Sullivan was open underneath, and the whistle on the outside, and it goes over on the turnover. And that was Greg Anthony away from the ball, just not allowing Tony Kimbrough to take position. So he picks up his fourth personal foul. Two players with four personals now, Kimbrough for Louisville and Butler. Now it's one and one, so we'll be shooting here at the Vegas end, and Smith will check back in with Kimbrough sitting down because of the four personal. Yesterday in watching LeBradford, he had ice on a wrist at practice, but this has been the hand of which he bruised, as Billy pointed out, in the first half. Short with the free throw. When you go for a loose ball, you better go with both hands in this game. <laughs> Knocked away. There's a good example. Gets it back. Touch pass. Oh. Holding foul. Oh. He'll go down. Bring him to the line. Hey, he's clever down around that basket. Oh, Excellent catch. And then he had the presence of mind to hang on in there against some good shot blockers. Look at that catch by Cornelius Holden. Goes up and still hangs on to the ball. Must be stronger than he looks. See it again. Gets hit once, twice, and still protects that ball. Felton loving it. Here's the catch again. Very nice. I, I was just thinking, if you're a freshman over there on the bench on either of these benches, you haven't played much, you're hoping none of these guys get in big foul trouble. You, you just like to sit there and watch this one, you know? This is not one that if you're a bench warmer, you want to get into the middle of right now. <laughs> this is some athletic contest between these two ball clubs. And remember, the number one, and maybe the number one athlete on either of these clubs, Harmon, is not playing. Oh, he's probably, that, huh? you know, he's watching back home right now thinking, oh, I wish I was in the middle of this one. He's one guy who'd love to be here. Holden goes in for the layup, and it's 68-65. Uses the left hand on that again. Spencer and Holden showing well, the value of I'll both I'll tell you hands. one thing. This game gets both these teams ready for the tournament. I won't face anything any tougher than this. Louisville goes to the zone. Augman off the fake. Neither team has had a stopper in that zone. There's Johnson a great hand. with the turnover. Butler is back. He's playing with four personal fouls at 7.39 and a five-point lead. So the Shark gambling. And Hunt's triple. What range, Brent? That was about a... I'd say that's a 26-footer. Backing up. Let's just say that was Byron Scott range and let it go at that. Here's Keith Williams wrapped around Spencer. Now Williams is moving up to the third all-time leading assist man in Louisville history. So those are two backcourt players that have really dished it out. Missing from the perimeter and Sullivan's off. And here's Williams now for the Cardinals. Holden is exhausted. Spencer wants it deep. Wraps in another one. Holden exhausted. Then he's probably going to have to take him out of there. He, he can hardly stand up. Watching this he, one. He, he can hardly stand up. Bending over with his hands on his knees, just hoping they don't come in his direction right now is Holden. 73-69. Young lobs into Butler. Double team muscling up. Drew the foul from the Bradford Smith. Nope. Let's check that foul and see who that was assessed. Both of them were right there. Spencer and Smith. We confirm it was Spencer. And that's his third personal. And Brent Holden went out. Tony Kimbrough back in the ballgame. Kimbrough with ball four. So these clubs are now starting to build up some foul trouble and some key players involved as well. And here's one of them. Butler on the line. Good free throw shooter. Has had his problems in the past, but this year really improved. 
Six minutes and 25 seconds left in regulation. We'll take a break, and our coverage of the road to the Final Four will continue after this message from your local station. One is the center of force, the other an all-around dazzler. Akeem, Jordan, tomorrow. This is CBS. I'm Larry West, sales manager of Finley Subaru, 3112 East Fremont. Subaru Legacies are such fantastic cars, I wanted to tell you about them myself. We're having a sale now, the top of the hill sale. These Legacies won't last long because I've priced them equipped with 130 horsepower, four-wheel disc brakes, automatic, air, AM, FM cassette starting at $10,900. Now that's a bargain. Come into Finley Subaru today. Let's talk Subaru bargains. Because kids won't sit still for more than half a second. Mm. It's a little blurred, isn't it? And because sometimes there's just not enough light. Isn't that a little dark? Fuji has created a very special film. You always bring extra film. I, know, I forgot it. Fuji. What, film? Super yeah. HG 400. Mm. A faster, fine-grained film for better pictures in almost any situation. I thought you said Ryan never sat still. He didn't. Super HG 400. So what happened? Now, almost anyone can take a good picture. I don't know. CBS Sports coverage of today's Louisville UNLV game is sponsored by Michelob Dry. Bold taste with no aftertaste. Mick Dry refreshes completely. Apple Computer, the power to be your best. And by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We build excitement. Well, here in Las Vegas, 74-69. The Vernon Rebs lead the Cardinals. A reminder tomorrow, and who knows, could be a preview of the NBA Eastern Conference Final. Both of those teams were beaten last night. The Pistons had their winning streak ended by Atlanta, and the Knicks lost one to the Heat. And at Miami Heat, looks like a good young team. Then after that, it's on to the NCAA. Syracuse, Providence, or LSU against Georgia. Syracuse and LSU, two more powerful teams. Then it'll be the final round of the Nissan Los Angeles Open tomorrow on CBS. Here, plenty of college basketball left, Mr. Packer. And Brent, two of those clubs tomorrow, Providence and Georgia, the kind of teams people talking about, dark horse clubs for the NCAA tournament, both of them capable. Vegas goes back to the zone. Everett Smith Sullivan on the right side now to get his jumper off. Smith was sealed up by that interior defense. Sullivan over for the jumper. To get Spencer in low, and he's short that time. He cannot get it back. Johnson goes to the corner. Vegas ball. Now the Reds come back, and here's Anthony. 74-69. They lead it. Butler hits the baseline, and the foul is offense against the running Reds, and that's the second on Ogman. Shark can't like that call. But the other thing that's amazing to me watching this game, we've seen how guys have become exhausted playing in this ball game. But how about Anthony? He can't even uh, get involved in conditioning because of that broken jaw, and he's been able to play almost every minute of this ball game. Here goes that matchup zone defense. Let's see if Louisville can cut it to three. Off of Spencer's hand, they turn it over. 18 turnovers. Williams trying to make the entry pass right away. He needs to go ahead and keep that ball occupied in the perimeter and then bump it on in the inside to Felton Spencer. Joyce Crum watching from the stand. In case you didn't join us at the top of the broadcast, 13 years ago, they were married out here in Las Vegas. In the Cardinals' last appearance, they were beaten by the running Rebs, and then last year in Louisville, they hammered them. No, this could be a great series through the years between these two powerhouses. 74-69. Anthony misfiring. Offensive rebound, Augman. He'll come right back and give it up to Butler, and there was a foul on the pass. Fred, I think one of the reasons that it is such a great series is because both coaches recruit a similar type of athlete. An athlete that can take it to the basket with great quickness and play this individual defense. So it makes a, an excellent matchup. That's something Denny Crum has spent his career at Louisville. He's won 74% of the time. Tarkanian over at Long Beach. And now here at Vegas, 82% of the time, Shark wins. 
Only behind the legendary Claire B is the all-time winning percentage coach in the history of the game on the collegiate level. Good help, Johnson. He was fouled. Now, Sullivan couldn't have been in better position for weak side defense, but he just tried to go up with Johnson, who was too strong for him. You get a game like this, so emotional, paid it, played at this pace, and sometimes they get tired, and it winds up being a free throw shooting contest the last couple of minutes. We'll see what happens. Here. We've got four and a half minutes to go, and it's 75-69 UNLV. They were up by as many as 14, in case you joined us late. They broke out 14-0 in this game. Brett Larry Johnson now the 11th leading rebounder in the country, but that puts him behind two guys in his own league. Eric MacArthur, who's number one in the nation, 13-5, and Cedric Sabalas. Great defense by Johnson. They force another turnover. Good hit, and then he runs the floor. The other end, Larry Johnson makes the defensive effort, runs down the floor, and gets the jam. How about those hands and that explosive move from the wing on into the basket? Now it's Kimbrough. Spencer comes up with it, has it knocked away by Ogman. But Kimbrough battling for the loose ball. He's got it. They may tie it up. They do. And it goes over to Vegas. Neither team today is going to be a loser in regard to heart. I don't know if I've seen two teams play any harder. Tough, fierce defense. Every loose ball is contested. And the fans showing their appreciation, and rightly so. great things doesn't he? he can pass it he can defend it's going to be tough now to battle back this time all game long louisville has had to come uphill spencer got one easily on the inside there and it's 80 71 they've got a lot of time but there was a difference between going inside right away and taking your time on the perimeter to be feed and smith assessed the personal foul his third. Well, that was just a one-on-one -on -one challenge between Anthony and Smith. Would have been a good idea either set a screen for Anthony or give the ball up a little bit. Then he looked over at us, just shook his head on that call. Well, one of the things most coaches feel when they play against a Jerry Tarkanian team is how is that hand checking going to be called? So far today, the referees, I think, have done an excellent job allowing these guys to play some defense. Referees from a neutral conference, all from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Neutral for these two. And again, those of you who may have tuned in a little bit late, it's a broken jaw, but they must protect that nose, keep that nasal passage open because the jaw is wired shut. And a doctor travels right with Las Vegas. And in the early going, we had a scare for a moment when he went down, but he did not take a blow flush to the nose. Well, Bradford oh! Banks it in for a triple. He didn't call that. 174. Brett, he didn't call that one off the board. What happened is the defender got right up there in his hands, and Bradford had to alter the shot. Went in anyway. Some spin move. Kimbrough goes down, and Ogman comes in, and the foul could be against Spencer. That'll do it. Spencer fouls out. He played a great game. They'll give him an ovation even here. Four points and nine rebounds. And it's going to be tough without him.
Those stats don't tell the story of this man's value to this team today. He's been all over the floor. Smith. The three. Just when you get ready to say it's over, Louisville says it's not. Hold on. Now they have to worry about the inside power of Larry Johnson. And there he is. The Spencer out of Kimbo, there. His fifth. They quickly lose back-to-back -back players. Well, a good job by UNLV. A smart play to go inside, realizing that Felton Spencer no longer down inside. So they lose 10 more points and eight rebounds. Suddenly, Craig Holly finds himself in the middle of one for Ben Owen. Anderson Hunt looked over to me, Brent, and said, we are number one. I guess you get no argument from us <laughs> right now. expensive ingredients. One dry refreshes completely. One taste and you'll know why. The one dry is Michelob dry. vehicle of the 90s. Introducing the Pontiac of minivans, the new Pontiac Transport. Right, transport, right. Get on your Pontiac. Right. I told them you can't hide from computers forever. He got burned once. I already got one big expensive computer system in the storeroom. The only guy that could work it moved to L.A. Who well, could the computer if nobody uses it? I hear he's working on a new system. He said he won't let his people work on anything he can't use himself. Maybe this computer's different. Macintosh has the power to change the way you feel about computers. The power to be your best. I'll be. I'll be. The leader, Fred Couples, at the 10th hole for birdie to increase his margin. Never a doubt as Fred Couples moves to 13 under. As we continue with our third round coverage, Couples the leader, Michael Allen two shots behind. Now let's go back to basketball in Las Vegas. All right, so Fred Couples with the lead there, and here it is Craig Holley, the senior from Noblesville, Indiana, his father played for the U of L from 61 to 64. His quote was he wanted to play for the best, with the best, and against the best, while getting a good education at Louisville. Well, he's got his chance right now. He's going to need some outside firepower as two of Denny Crum's players foul out of the game. He already is shorthanded without Jerome Harmon. What do you think it'd be like for Tark if he didn't win 82% of his games? Would he have eaten the towel by now? Oh, yeah, several. Yeah. Now, Holly's a pretty good shooter. He used to have a lot of playing time for this club two years ago. Sullivan, they'll be looking for the threes now. Johnson will start to mop up underneath without Spencer in there. Vegas will take a couple of seconds off the clock here against the defense, and they draw another foul from Louisville. That was Williams. If you're going to double-team Larry Johnson, you better not try to steal the ball out of his hands because he's got great power in those hands, and you're just going to pick up a cheap foul. Here's the uh, prime time lineup tonight on CBS. It begins with Paradise, then Tour of Duty, and Saturday night with Connie Chung. We've got a timeout. So we'll take a break here. With 1.53 to go, it's 84-77. The engineers who created the Grand Prix endowed
crowded with a fully independent suspension. A powerful fuel-injected V6 and made anti-lock brakes available. Its designers blessed it with an aerodynamic profile. And now, to make Grand Prix an even better value, our accountants have added this. College is a tough climb. Joining the Army could make it easier. You can earn money for your education with the GI Bill and the Army College Fund. And you'll develop the confidence and determination that can get you to the top in college and beyond. Mom, we need more Wheaties. Right now, get Michael Jordan posters free on boxes of Wheaties. Collect all three and turn them into one Jumbo Jordan poster. But you better hurry, because they're going fast. Better get your posters. Better eat your Wheaties. Quiet down, please. The festivities are for Dwayne tonight. Dwayne, what's it been? 34 years? 34 years. All that time, I don't think Dwayne ever missed a delivery. I guess that means this division never missed a delivery. Way to go, Dwayne. Happy retirement, Dwayne. Now it's our turn to deliver. Mass Mutual, we help you keep your promises. It is played on one of the PGA's most feared and revered courses. Live from the City of Angels, the Nissan Los Angeles Open. Next. Missouri ranked number one by the AP. They've got a tough game tomorrow in Oklahoma. So Kansas with an opportunity to jump this weekend, along with Duke and UNLV right here. And Georgetown was beating Villanova at last check. Oklahoma, in its last 100 games down in Norman, has won 98. Vegas, in its last 100 games, here at the Shark Tank, has won 94. So you would think that Missouri could meet some resistance down there because the Sooners played them pretty tough at Missouri Two last Two point week. loss, yes. Uh, Oklahoma, a tough club. they very deep. Got seven or eight guys to come in and have a 20-point game, so it's tough to, deep, to set a defensive plan against them. 86-77 inside of two minutes. Not easy getting a three-point shot off against this pressure man-to-man. -man. He stepped inside the line, and Williams with a nice shot. Two points, 86-79. Minute and a half now. Denny Crum wanting full-court pressure, trying to pick something off. And this Vegas team, a much better free-throw shooting team than they were a few years ago, which was one of their Achilles heels, kind of like Georgetown and Syracuse had that problem. But this team uh, goes the line with Johnson, and with Butler, two big guys that can make them. Four fouls now on Smith. So really, in effect, the fouls have taken Louisville out of this here late. Harmon not playing because he missed a couple of classes. I'm not sure how much he would have played anyway, Billy, because yeah. of that injury we saw. Right. Uh, Michigan State, last play of the game, uh, just about the last play of the game, and he went down. looked like a very severe injury, but I understand he will be able to get back by next week and be at 100%. It's the kind of a game that can really impress the selection committee and help Vegas wind up being seated number one out west, I would think. Well, their schedule has been extremely aggressive this year. Their league is underrated. So I think that they deserve a number one seed. One on one, they'll be shooting again. It'll be Ogman coming up to the line. One eleven now to go. And Fred, here is what a lot of coaches are talking about is the change in the rules is to go ahead and make these free throws, two shot free throws, or the ball out of bounds. And eliminate the need for a coach to have to go after everybody and follow the last two minutes of the game. And I think it would be a very good move to go to the international rule. We'll be working on uh, five guys in double figures again. Object here is to get rid of the ball before you get fouled. Swatted away by Holden. Goaltending is the call. Ninety to seventy-nine. Vegas gets this one up to the nineties. Air ball missed everything out of bounds. Last forty-nine seconds. Really a, a courageous performance by the Cardinals of Denny Crum. They simply ran out of firepower. Then he's going to have something to say to the referee on the back down to four. He's not pleased with the way this one wound up being officiated. Let me tell That's you that. That's going to be 
That was grabbing the shirt, and that should have been automatically an intentional foul. See, when a man grabs his shirt, it's automatic. And that should have been an automatic, too. And the ball back. But you talk about Vegas hitting 100. How about that Loyola Marymount Club? They'd be down by 24 points at this point oh. if they hit their average. Well, Louisville shot only five free throws this half, and Vegas, 26. Pretty big stat. I'd say. Maybe Denny does have a conversation that he'd like I'd to I'd say. Have. And you say Vegas plays aggressive defense. Sullivan. Butler with possession of the final 28 seconds. So back-to-back -back losses for the first time this season by Louisville, and Smith goes down hard again. He has been a tough customer here today. Well, coming off that performance against Memphis State, where he was 0 for 7, did not score for the first time in his career. He played uh, much better today, and, and this is more the LeBradford Smith right. that uh, we're used to seeing. You know, at courtside over at the Forum, you know how they have to pay to see the Lakers. Well, here they call this Gucci Row, but see a lot of sneakers <laughs> today. These folks never miss. There's one of their great fans, Mrs. Molaski, who was featured in Sports Illustrated, not so glowingly, but uh, quite a fan here. Was the honorary coach down here, I guess, two years ago. There are some great fans around the city. They, they love this basketball game. Uh, just so you know, you cannot bet on a, on a Las Vegas sporting event legally in this city. There are no odds posted over at the Sands or any of the other sports bookshops in town. And that involves football, basketball. When they go on the road, they don't put any lines up either. It's, a, it's against the rules and regulations. But everybody in this town loves this basketball team. And, and that man right there. You bet. So Vegas wins again. The Shark is still unbeaten.